Hello children, welcome to today's English class. I hope you all are safe, healthy and happy at home and you are connected with us and learning a lot through this mode of learning. Children, these days we are learning some lessons from your supplementary text, Footprints Without Feet. Let me tell you children that today we have reached the last chapter of your supplementary text and we are going to learn that last chapter and uh, after learning the chapter we will be finishing your supplementary text and then we will move on to your prose text where we have two or three lessons uh, uh, left ok. In your supplementary text children you had 10 chapters and 3 chapters were deleted the midnight visitor, a question of trust and the book that saved the earth. So, these three chapters have been deleted for you. So, remaining six chapters we have already done and today we will be doing the seventh chapter. Okay. So, children before we move on to today's story which is very interesting as I keep telling you in every class that we do learn a lot whenever we learn a new chapter or a new story and especially from your supplementary text because the themes that have been included is of your interest or the challenges or problems which you face in your day to day life you know as a student of this age ok. So, before we move on to the lesson children I would like to talk to you about a very important aspect. Please look at this word very carefully equality and I have also written here discrimination ok. So, children you are familiar with these two words our constitution talks about equality and you have been learning about equality right from class 6 in your social science civics you have this particular topic equality where a lot of stories or examples have been given for you to make this concept clear ok and you all you know overcome this particular word in your daily life ok and you might also feel that though our constitution ensures equality for all its citizens all the citizens of our country and though we have a democratic form of government ok where the citizens enjoy lot of rights and freedom but children we might experience in our own life and maybe you all also might have uh, experienced that inequality in one form or the other do exist in our society though our constitution guarantees equality, equal rights and equal freedom to its citizens. Do you agree with me children? I am sure you will agree with me because if you have a habit of watching the news regularly you might have watched the recent incidents of racial discrimination in America, the killing of blacks, the discrimination on the basis of the color of the skin ok. So, even in our own country though we talk of equality but many a times we feel that we are being deprived or we are being discriminated. It could be on the basis of color, it could be on the basis of being rich or poor, it could be on the basis of religion, it could be on the basis of caste, ok, language. You might have studied this particular term and also this term in your social science and this year too uh, you have these two topics and when you learn them in your civics you will understand them in a better manner ok. So, why I have brought this topic here is children 
we do experience inequality and when you talk about the outcome of democracy, when we say that what are the expectations of people in a democracy, this term comes first. People do expect equal rights and equal opportunities without any discrimination. Children, one such discrimination, let us take one example today that is gender. Okay? Gender discrimination is still there in the Indian society and we often say that India has got a male dominated society. Father is the head of the family. I do agree father is the head of the family. But you might have experienced women, you know, suffering a lot. Everywhere at home, in the society, wherever they go, okay, the place of work, their uh, dignity is questioned, okay. They do not get respect, their work is not respected. So this particular topic is there uh, in other subjects too where you learn about them. So that ideas and those ideas will definitely help you to come up with your own views about this particular topic. So the gender discrimination children can clearly be seen in the Indian society yet even so many years of independence have passed. Okay? There are few places in India, you know, some villages where still girl children are considered as a curse and they are killed even before they are born, isn't it? There are some places where still, you know, when a boy is born in a family, the occasion is celebrated and if a girl is born, you know, there is sadness and sorrow in the family, okay. This happens in some of the places in our country. But if we talk about the urban areas, the cities, we do have examples of girls being brought up, you know, uh, equally along with boys. And we see that in many areas, girls are performing better than boys. Isn't it? If we look at the results of the CBSC examination children every year, you can read in the newspapers and you might have read in the newspapers that girls have outshined the boys. They have done better. As usual, uh, the girls have done better than the boys. And even in many competitive examinations, they do better than the boys. And there is no field where you don't find women. Recently, you might have heard that women pilots, okay, only women pilot flying the planes, okay, uh, in, in navigation too. They, only the women crew travel uh, in a ship uh, to different parts of the world. So all these were in the news, recent news. So if you talk of urban areas, we find uh, all positive signs but I won't say that in urban areas also girls are treated equally they do face different challenges so we need to overcome these challenges and these challenges we find more in rural areas children where there is lack of awareness and our garment under the leadership of our Prime Minister is trying its best to remove this disparity and to give equal opportunities to girl child. So in 2015 our Prime Minister introduced the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao campaign. Okay. And this scheme has been introduced specially to save the girl child. 
as I told you girls are killed even before they are born. So to stop this and to provide equal rights to them okay so the government has started this campaign and you all are aware of this okay so you need to have an idea of all the schemes of the government which is related to the welfare of children especially welfare of children for example education has now become the right of every child after the introduction of the right to education so you might wonder why i why am i why am i discussing these two terms with you and especially when i talk of this campaign beti bachao beti padhao so you might have got an indication that i am talking to the discrimination you know faced by i'm talking about the discrimination faced by girls isn't it so the story which we are going to learn today children is also about a girl named bholi okay the name of the story is also bholi which has been written by k a abbas a very famous writer okay and who has won uh, prizes or awards for his work on national integration he has also directed many films so definitely the story bholi is you know an eye opener for all of us for the readers and also to realize challenges faced by many girls in our country okay and what is our role in overcoming these challenges and in building a progressive nation okay because girls contribute a great to the development of a society women play you know a vital role in the building of a progressive nation and a strong nation okay so now the character of this story bholi her name was sulekha okay her name was sulekha okay but she was called as bholi here bholi means a simple son or a person who is foolish and who can easily be you know tricked by others okay who can easily be fooled okay or cheated very easily simple son okay now this girl was born in a family of seven children children please uh, do listen carefully as i talk about the story to you and then we can look at the main points of the story which i have jotted down for you and it will also help you to jot down the points whenever you are reading the story so out of seven children three were sons and four were daughters and the three sons were sent to city for education and then uh, they were also sent to colleges since they were sons so they were being given special importance by the family and uh, they were born in a family of prosperous farmers and bholi's father was a revenue official number dar you can read in your book it has been written number dar that means a revenue official who collects revenue so she was from a prosperous family but you have to keep in mind this term as the three sons were sent to the city for higher education okay and they were being taken care of and now what about the daughters four daughters okay now the three daughters were pretty healthy and they were good looking 
So two of them were already married and one was about to get married and Bholi was the youngest of all the children and Bholi was the youngest daughter. Now let's try to understand what was Bholi's challenge. Okay? When she was born, she was a normal child and she was pretty and good looking. She was fair. But when she was 10 years old, she fell off from her cot and it had damaged her brain. And also when she was 2 years old, she was attacked by smallpox and she had all marks on her body, all pork marks in her body. Okay, so on one hand the attack of smallpox and the incident of her falling from her cot when she was 10 years old which affected her brain. So because of this children, you know, since it affected her brain, so she was, you know, not very intelligent and, you know, she looked uh, ugly now because of all those pock marks and with her brain being affected, she was not healthy too, okay. And now as she was not good looking now with all those marks on her face and also not being intelligent, she was being neglected by the family. So children, please listen very carefully as I talk about the discrimination faced by this particular girl, Bholi, who had a very beautiful name, Sulekha. But she was called Bholi at home and the way she was being discriminated. Okay? She was not sent to school, the first thing. Okay? She was deprived of her education and you know parents were not loving and caring towards her okay nobody even bothered to clean her clothes you know her clothes were dirty and nobody bothered about her food or her clothes and parents and others spoke very rudely to her. No one spoke to her lovingly. She was deprived of her education and she never got new clothes. Okay. She used to wear all old clothes. Whereas all the other sisters, they were loved and taken care of because they were pretty and good looking and they were also healthy. They did not have any problem as Bholi had. Okay. So because of these reasons, she was being discriminated. She was being deprived of, you know, the love and care of the family. She was being deprived of uh, good clothes and clean clothes. And she was uh, deprived of her education. Okay. And uh, you know, the parents thought that she was not intelligent, she was not clever, okay? And that is why they did not think about her marriage also. Okay? The all, uh, the, all the other daughters, you know, two of them got married. And one was ready for getting married because all of them were beautiful and pretty and you know the parents got them married very easily. And as it happens in many parts of our country, especially in the rural uh, areas, in many villages, parents marry the girls at an early age. And boys are given more importance, you know their demands are fulfilled, their dreams are fulfilled. Whereas the girls are neglected and parents, uh, you know, they think girls are a burden for them. And especially if they have 
you know some disability or you know they are not good looking and they are not uh, smart or intelligent enough so the parents concern is more regarding their marriage and their future life but as far as bholi was concerned the parents just neglected her she was just deprived of all the facilities at home and all the rights and freedom i would say so this particular girl you know they even called her a dumb cow okay a cow cannot speak so here one disability children which bholi had was that she stammered you know she was not able to speak clearly and that is the reason she spoke very less she did not go out and all the children made fun of her they laughed at her okay because she was not able to speak properly she stammered and children she stammered not because you know she had this disability from the time when she was born no as i told you when she was 2 years old she was attacked by smallpox and then when she was 10 years uh, she had a problem when she fell down and she had damaged her brain and because of these reasons you know because of uh, you know lack of proper growth as her uh, brain was damaged so she was not able to speak and also she was a neglected child in the family so definitely psychologically also she was uh, you know suffering mentally and physically also so children now what is the twist in the story one fine day the tahsildar of the village comes there for uh, the inauguration of a primary school in bholi's village and this tahsildar asks bholi's father to send his daughters to school okay since he was in the revenue department and he was an official uh, of the government so he reminded him of his responsibility of sending his daughters to school and now bholi's father and mother had consultation at home because he could not disobey the tahsildar also he did not want to send his two daughters were already married and one was about to get married and all of them were beautiful so they had this uh, you know belief that girls should not be sent to school you know so she said how can we send our girls to school but they couldn't disobey the tahsildar also so bholi's mother came up with an idea that they could send bholi to school because she was not intelligent she was not good looking and they were you know not much concerned about her and you know they also thought nobody is going to marry her okay since she was not good looking and she was not intelligent okay so they decided to send bholi to school and bholi was very reluctant initially to go to school children because she was brought up that way she was neglected and she stammered but you know the parents brought new clothes for her and they took her to school and very reluctantly she went to school but here children the teacher was very loving and caring towards her so it was the teacher who brought a change in her the role of teacher here is very prominent children so there is a question also in the examination about how the teacher was able to bring a transformation in bholi so the first day she went to school you know everything was strange for her children laughed at her because she stammered she was not able to talk properly she was not able to even uh, pronounce her name properly you know when the teacher asked her name she just, she was just saying bha 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 she was not even able to say bholi properly and it was a teacher who sat with her spoke very lovingly to her and it was the first time children bholi found someone being very loving towards her talking very lovingly to her and that was really a happy moment for her and that was what you know compelled her to learn and the teacher assured her that if she 
comes out of her fear, then she'll be able to speak, you know, very fluently. And that was what happened. And the teacher, you know, was always with her, guided her, supported her, encouraged her. And that is how slowly, you know, Bholi was able to speak very confidently. And one fine day, the parents came up, you know, with the idea of getting Bholi married. And you know children to whom? To a person who was of the age of her father, who was already married and had grown up children. Can you imagine children? A girl of your age being married to a person who is 50 years of age. So the parents wanted, you know, Bholi to get married to that person because they thought she was not pretty, she would not get a proper husband and you know they were not able to afford dowry also and this person did not demand for any dowry as he was 50 years and already married and you know why Bholi's parents were attracted towards this old man because he had a big shop, he had property okay, and he was well settled and he did not demand for any dowry also. So somehow they forced Bholi to get married and on the day of the marriage, you know, this person came with all band baja and barat and, you know, with, you know, great pomp and show and Bholi's parents were very much attracted. And the moment he saw this girl while he was about to, you know, put the garland around her neck, he could see all the marks on her face and he refused to marry the girl. Though he was 50 years and already married, had children, but still he refused to marry this girl and demanded for dowry. 5,000 rupees and now Bholi's parents could not offer that dowry. Okay, so he pleaded that, you know, uh, he'll pay 2,000 rupees, but he said no, he wanted 5,000 rupees and poor father was ready to pay 5,000 rupees too. But... Here comes the role of the girl who was known as simpleton or a dumb cow. Suddenly how she becomes so courageous and how she speaks out so fluently and she refuses to get married to get married to this old man. She says I cannot marry a person who is a coward and who does not respect me right I cannot marry this old man so she was courageous enough to say on the face of his parents in front of everybody and that was what shocked everybody you know so all the band Baja Bharat went back and Bholi's father was now worried and he asked what are you going to do now because nobody is going to marry you this was a great insult for our family you know children what Bholi replied she said, I don't want to marry. Now I am independent enough and I am going to take care of you. I am going to stay with you and I am going to work as a teacher in the same school where I studied. And Bholi's teacher who was watching all this was very happy and she supported her. So wasn't it a very interesting and happy ending children of the story? So this was about a transformation, a change in thoughts that we need to develop in us and also in others. Unless we change our thoughts, we will not be able to change ourselves. Gandhiji had rightly said that be a change that you want to bring in the society. So children, I hope you have understood the story. Let's now quickly look at the points and then I would request you to read the story very carefully and try to understand the values and the learnings which are going to get after reading this particular chapter. Bholi was the youngest daughter of Ram Lal among the three sons and four daughters. When she was just 10 months, she fell from her cot and part of her brain was damaged. She got smallpox when she was two years old and so she was a fair pretty child with marks on her face. 
Bholi was a very simple and backward girl who stammered while speaking. The other daughters of Ramlal were good looking and healthy. Ramlal was always worried about Bholi. He thought she had neither good looks nor intelligence. A primary school for the girls was inaugurated in the village by the Tasildar. The Tasildar asked Ramlal to send all his daughters to school and set an example for the fellow villagers. Ramlal could not say a no and so it was decided that Bholi would go to school. Bholi was given a bath, oil applied to her matty hair and dress that no more fitted champa was given to her. Ramlal caught her by the hand and took her to school. The next day she was frightened. Bholi thought school would be a better place than home and at school she was happy to see many girls of her age and hoped to befriend one of them. She couldn't pronounce her name when asked to by the teacher and she was ashamed that even after so much effort she couldn't pronounce her name. The teacher being very friendly and sympathetic encouraged her to try again and at last she succeeded in saying bho 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 bholi. The teacher patted her affectionately. She was then assured by her teacher that very soon she would start speaking like the other girls without stammering. Bholi's heart was throbbing with new hope and a new life. The teacher gave a picture book to Bholi and had a hope that she would finish it within a month. She always encouraged Bholi and assured her that one day she would be the most learned girl in the village. One day, December, a prosperous grocer in the village came with marriage proposal for Bholi. He was rich, had his own house and a lot of money in his bank. But December was almost the same age as Bholi's father and he limped. He also had grown up children from his first wife. These things didn't matter to Bholi's parents. Bholi reluctantly agreed for the marriage to keep the honor of the family. On the wedding day, Bishambar Nath came with a lot of friends and relatives. A brass band played a filmy tune and such pomp and splendor overjoyed Ramlal. Whereas her elder sisters were jealous of Bholi's luck. During the garland exchange ceremony, he happened to see Bholi's face and said he would not marry a girl with such marks on her face. Ramlal came down to his knees, but Bishambar did not agree. Finally, he agreed to marry Bholi, but demanded 5,000 rupees as dowry. Ramlal placed his turban at Bishambar's feet and was ready to pay 2,000 rupees. But Bishambar did not budge from 5,000. Finally, Ramlal, having no choice, went in and brought 5,000 rupees and placed the bundle of notes on Bishambar's feet. Bishambar had a triumphant smile on his face and he agreed to put the garland. Before Bishambar could put the garland, Bholi snatched the garland and threw it in the fire. She threw away her veil as well. She stunned everybody by speaking without stammering and said she would not marry someone who was so mean, greedy and coward. Ramlal called her crazy and asked her what she would do as no one will marry her now to which Bholi replied that she would stay with her parents and serve them in their old age and teach in the same school from where she learned so much. Bholi's teacher had been watching the whole drama standing in the corner and said yes Bholi of course. So children I hope you enjoyed the story and also it was a great learning for you and you will also create awareness among people about the importance of education and the importance of educating a girl child. Next class I'll meet you with a new topic until then take care stay safe stay at home.